welcome our next speakers. Judy Adams is, has been a, with Oxfam Australia for 13 years, working on issues like trade, foreign aid, Aboriginal health, food security and climate change. With her is Tenzin Chuki, a Tibetan nurse and vice president of the Tibetan community of South Australia, who's going to share with us a bit about the impacts of climate change on her home country. Please welcome Judy and Tenzin. <laughs> Hello folks, um, great to see so many people here. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge that today we're meeting on Ghana land and that we recognise and respect the traditions and, and culture of the Ghana people. I'd also like to pay my respects to the Aboriginal elders all here and all non-Aboriginal elders as well. Simply put, climate change, thank you, thank you, sorry. How's that? A bit deeper and a bit sexy. Um, to, <laughs> sorry. Um, to put it simply, Climate change hurts people, and it's for this reason international humanitarian aid organisations are marching around the world, as this is not just an environmental issue, it's a human rights one. The impacts of climate change are happening now, and it is the most vulnerable people, most vulnerable communities and countries that are most affected. Changing rainfalls, increasing temperatures, sea level rises, and the intensifying of extreme weather events such as Typhoon Haiyan, in the Philippines and Cyclone Pam in Vanuatu are all having a devastating impact on communities around, around the world, causing loss of life, hunger and migration and it will only increase if we do not take action now. From our nearest neighbours in the Pacific to communities around the world in Africa, South America, Asia, people are suffering. To help us understand the severity of impacts, we are lucky to have with us Tenzin Choki, Vice President of the Tibetan Community in Adelaide, to share with us how the impacts of climate change are affecting the people of Tibet and the Himalayan regions. Please welcome Tenzin. I am a Tibetan born and raised in exile in India. As a result of China's occupation of Tibet in the 1950s, like thousands of Tibetan, my parents and grandparents escaped to India, crossing the Himalayas on foot for many weeks. I came to Australia to study nursing in 2011, and today I am working as a nurse in Adelaide. I'm fortunate to live in Australia. It is a beautiful and free country where one can enjoy freedom and human rights. As a young girl, I grew up listening to stories of Tibet, its snow-capped mountains and its clean rivers from my grandparents. Today, this rich land of Tibet is facing serious environmental challenges. It is a great honour for me and our local Tibetan community to be part of this historic People's Climate March in Adelaide and all around the world. Yeah. Like the Arctic and Pacific Island nations, Tibet today is on the front line of global climate change. Tibetan Plato is warming as twice as fast as the global average. Tibetans inside Tibet are directly experiencing the impact of rising temperatures, melting glaciers and extreme weathers. But these changes in Tibet will be felt far beyond its borders. Tibet is known as the roof of the world because it is the largest and highest plateau in the world. Tibet is also called World Third Pole because it is the home to the largest store of fresh river outside Arctic and Antarctic. Tibet is also called Asia's uh, water tower because it is the source for major Asia rivers. So our message is simple and clear. If we are concerned about climate change, if we are concerned about inequality, and if we are concerned about human rights, food and water security, then we need to pay closer attention to Tibet. Most importantly, we need to understand that Tibetan people can be a part of the solution. While climate change affects us all, it is hitting some regions and communities harder than others. Sadly, communities who have done the least to cause this global warming, such as Tibet nomads, are among the most vulnerable group. So I want to end by quoting His Holiness the Dalai Lama. 
planet is our home and Tibet Plato is its roof. The Tibetan Plato needs to be protected, not just for Tibet, but for the health and sustainability of the entire world. Action for climate change is not a question of one nation or two nations. This is a question of humanity. Our world is our only home. There is no other planet where we may move. Thank you.